In the previous movie, we created an HTML5 page from scratch. In this movie, we will add additional markup to implement semantic structures and make the page ready for responsive use on a variety of mobile devices and browsers. HTML5 introduced a variety of structural elements. Think of a structural element as walls in a house. They partition space in order to meet a particular need or purpose. This page on the w3schools.com site, HTML5 New Elements, provides a nice list of these elements along with the description of what they do. In its absolute basic form, a typical page will have a header, nav, main, and footer. As more content is added and different situations arise, more structural elements may be added. In this video, we will limit ourselves to the absolute basics as mentioned. Let's begin by opening the index.html page created in the previous video. In the body element, create several blank lines. In the first blank line, type a header, which has the header opening and closing tags. The header defines the section where we introduce the site, not necessarily the page. Think of this as the front porch to a house. The porch might contain a house number or a welcome mat. It is where the visitor learns about where they are. Within the header, you will typically find the site's name, a tagline, possibly tools to search or create an account. For now, we will add an H1 heading and put our site name inside of it. Below the header, let's create a nav element. The nav element is where the navigation links go. Think of it as the entryway to the house. From it, we can see other rooms in the house and make choices about where we want or need to go. There are many ways to build navigation links, but one of the most common is to build the links in an unordered list. For now, we will build a simple list, put some text in the list items, but not build the actual links. Refer to the video screen to see the markup for the unordered list or refer to the w3schools.com page on HTML lists, the URL is provided. Following the nav, we want to build our content container. This is done using the main element. Referring to the HTML5 Elements page, you see that the main element is for holding the main content of our web page. This is the family room of the house. It is where all of the important things gather. In our page, we already have some content the H1 and the paragraph from the first movie. We will build the main and then put the content inside of it. Finally, we will add the footer after the closing tag of the main element. The footer is somewhat like a back porch of the house. It's important, but not really needed for living space. It's where we put the garbage can, muddy shoes, and the like. In the footer, we will put all of the links to the legal policies, the contact us, and other things of that nature. These are important, but not what people come to see on our site. Inside of our footer, we will add a simple last updated statement to let us and site visitors know when we last made a change to the page. Refer to the video for the markup. With the structures in place, save the page and click the Live Preview button in brackets 
to see what the page looks like in the browser. Not too impressive at this point. One of the things we are concerned about is that we have written our code correctly, meaning it is valid. Luckily for us, the World Wide Web Consortium, the folks that write the rules for HTML, have a validator that we can use to check our page. If you have the Web Developer Toolbar installed, which if you are in my class you should, then it is a simple matter of using the Validate Local HTML tool. In Chrome, click the Web Developer icon in the toolbar, then select Tools, then Validate Local HTML. The tool then copies all of the HTML in the page and sends it to the validation server. The server checks it and returns a report of the test to our browser. The outcome is simple. Green is good, red is bad. We always want our report to be green with no red, meaning that our code is valid. If your report shows any errors, go back and compare your code to that shown in the video. Find and fix any errors, save and revalidate the page until the HTML is reported as being valid. Finally, we are going to add three items to the page. One item will tell the browser what human language the content of the page is written in. The second item will tell Microsoft's new Edge browser to read our page in standards mode. And the last item will tell all browsers to gauge the width of the browser window, known as the viewport, to the width of the device it is being viewed on. This is important when our page is viewed on mobile devices. Return to your editor and scroll to the opening HTML tag at the top of the document. Click after the L in the tag and type a space. Brackets should pop up a list of attributes. Type lang equals quote en close quote. Brackets may help in this process. We are indicating the content of this page is in English. A list of language codes can be seen on the w3schools.com website using the URL shown. Move to the head element of the file. After the title element, create two new empty lines. In the first, type meta HTTP hyphen equiv equals X hyphen UA hyphen compatible close quote space content equals quote IE equals edge close quote and then close the void element. This line tells the edge browser from Microsoft to default to standards mode when reading and working with HTML. This is not entirely necessary, but it should help with a more consistent experience for users of the Edge browser. Beneath that line, let's add the following meta element. Meta, name equals viewport, make sure viewport is enclosed in quotes, space, content equals quote, width equals device hyphen width, close quote, and then close the void element. As mentioned earlier, this line tells devices that the maximum width of the browser, again known as the viewport, should be that of the device screen. When you are done, compare your code to that shown on the screen. Pause your movie if needed. Save the page. Return to the live preview, restarting it if needed. You should not see any changes as a result of the three lines that were just added. They were not meant for humans, rather they are instructions for the browser. Be sure to validate the code again. If things are still green and valid, then our work is done for this video. However, if there are errors, then review your code, fix things until the code is valid.